I'm Tracy. This is the sewing channel. Enough talking already. Let's get busy making a pressing station on wheels. <laughs> Every now and again, your pressing station needs a makeover, and this one is far too long of needing one. <laughs> Let me deconstruct this so you can see exactly what I have underneath this table. First layer is, of course, the cotton fabric of your choice. Then I have a couple of wool mats, some Insel Bright, which I will link down below in the description box, a couple layers of just your standard batting. The bottom layer of my pressing station will consist of just one soft piece of flannel. You can use any table on wheels, and I ain't kidding you, any table, it will work. I'm using an old manicure table. Now, if you're wondering why I would have this table, well, you might have guessed it. I used to be a manicurist for years, but this table now serves me much better as a pressing station. Let me show you how I measure for that perfect snug fit. First, I lay the cotton piece over top of the table and I look for obstacles that might hinder my elastic from going all the way under and cupping the table in a sense. And since I do have two obstacles, one on each end, my fabric will only go just to those obstacles. This table used to have a drawer in it, but it doesn't anymore, so there are no obstacles on the two long ends. You want that to hang approximately four to five inches from the top of the table down. Be sure to take into account the wool mat if you're using one. And here I am tracing out where the actual corner is on my table. I am using a friction heat erasable pen. If anybody's wondering, I'll link it. Over at the cutting station now, we are going to make a few adjustments at the corner. We don't want to have any bulk within the corner once we attach the elastic. I roughly find the center of that curve and I draw a line toward the corner of my fabric area. And you can see that obstacle and there is only a couple inches worth of fabric. So I kind of angle and draw the curve following that going toward that four to five inch gap. And since I try to work smarter rather than harder, we're gonna fold this so that we can cut all four corners at the same time. First, I clean up that obstacle end area. Then I follow with the rotary cutter right around that curve that I made. Now we should have a gradual sloping toward that four to five inch area. Now before you go ahead and commit to putting the elastic on this fabric, check first, lay it on your table, turn it around, make sure all of your fabric is right where it needs to be. And mine is going to fit perfectly. Here I have some half inch in width elastic that I picked up at the Goodwill years ago and I'm still working off of this. A zigzag stitch will be the best stitch for this project. Now if you have a serger, go ahead, get it out and use it. It'll work perfectly. Have you ever played tug of war? If not, you're about to learn how to play tug of war with some elastic. First you lay one end down and that is on the wrong side of the fabric. The first few stitches you make, you won't be pulling anything. Once you're able to grab the elastic behind your presser foot, just like you see me doing there, that's when the tug of war begins. You want to pull from the back and from the front on this elastic. All the while, you are laying that elastic right down on the edge of the fabric. You don't ever want to just pull the front elastic and just let everything fall behind it. If you pulled on that front elastic while you were sewing, you're going to pull your needle and bend it and possibly break it and get hurt. So don't do that. Plain tug of war with your elastic in your fabric is how you're going to get that perfect stretchiness, almost like a shower cap, so that it'll go over your table and it will cup it and keep it nice and snug where it needs to stay. Take your time around those corners too. You see, I pull and sew a little bit, stop, readjust, and do the whole process over again until I'm past that corner. Once you get to the end of the elastic and there's no more to sew, you're just going to simply overlap those two pieces of elastic. I overlap about an inch or so, and then I just cut the elastic. 
It's important to note that you probably should backstitch where you overlap those two elastics too. So that way, it's not coming apart, no way, no how. Since the ends of my table had obstacles, I then put a piece of elastic in the middle to hold those side pieces because they will gape if I don't do that. Now, if I did not have the obstacles, I totally could do the four to five inches all the way around and it would stay nice and snug. Okay, let's put all of our layers back on now. From bottom to top, we have one piece of soft flannel, two pieces of just standard batting, and then we do have one piece of insole bright, and then I have two wool mats that fit on my table perfectly. If I wanted to just press on the wool mats, I totally could, but I like the wool mats and I also like pretty fabrics, so it's a compromise. <laughs> After I get my cover back on my pressing station, I then just take a simple safety pin, grab that elastic, and pin it to the opposite side underneath this table. And I pull it as snug as I can so that everything stays nice and taut. And the next step, of course, is to absolutely press all of the wrinkles out of your fabric. And that heat erasable pen, that'll erase too. Take a look at your screen right now. I have handpicked a couple of special videos just for you if you enjoyed this tutorial. Go ahead and click on them and I'll see you in the next video. Until next time on the Sewing Channel, take care.